All right, let's say you're an admin and you're trying to change the password. What are you going to use? I'm disappointed in your choices. We've all been there. From the brink of time to now, Control Panel has had a lot of changes. It's where you go to add accounts, change passwords, and set this back to this. Because I don't know who would use icons over categories. I mean, this is so much cleaner. In this video, we're going to cover all sorts of utilities and how to configure them. System and security serve two different purposes between Windows versions, but it's where you'll find the Action Center. Windows Action Center is going to bug you about everything that might be wrong with your computer. It's labeled Security and Maintenance in Windows 10. This is one of the most important areas because it contains User Account Control, also known as UAC. UAC is a tool used to restrict the use of the Run as Administrator prompt. And while we all can't live without a good old, it's important for the security of the system that proper authentication happens. You're going to want to have UAC set to the highest setting, which is always notify. The next thing we need to talk about is Windows Update. It's bad when a user chooses not to update their things. Believe me, everyone does it. You're going to want to install your updates automatically. Ensure that this setting is implemented. Now, it is your preference to install any pending updates now or later. Just ensure that you're getting those done. The next thing we need to talk about is a firewall. First of all, we need to talk about what a firewall is. A firewall is a program that will monitor and control network traffic that is coming in and out of the system. Some important terms include inbound and outbound. To be more detailed, a firewall will filter out incoming data. In our case, any incoming connections will be blocked because according to the firewall's logic, all incoming data is blocked. Let's say we set the firewall to block web data from going out. Not only would this be a major inconvenience, it would also prevent you from accessing most websites and web services. Firewall will do exactly what I suggested earlier. All we have to do is go into control panel and configure the default settings. To do so, Follow these steps. By default, you'll want to block inbound connections. The reason why is because if you're not initiating the connection and you don't need to, there's no reason to have that. Outbound, for the most part, you want outbound connections to be enabled, but you'll also want to keep watch as to what's going out. Next, we're going to talk about remote access. Remote access is a way for another computer to access yours. And unless your documentation says that you want people to access your computer remotely, we're going to want to have this disabled you'll find these settings in your system settings. Control Panel also has access to BitLocker, which is a program you can use to protect your files and folders from unauthorized access. This is accomplished by encrypting your hard drive with a password. Encryption is the process of encoding a message or information so that it is only accessible to authorized users. As an example, having the password allows you to access that data. By encrypting your drive with BitLocker, any attempt to access your drive will be met with a challenge of a password to the person attempting to access it. The next thing we will talk about is your programs. Here, you'll find everything installed on your computer. In addition to the installed programs, we've also got Windows features. This area will be more important in the future. Let's talk about some additional tools and features you can find in Control Panel. These include administrative tools, internet options, network adapter settings, we will cover these in a future video. Let's go ahead and review everything we've learned. The Tools and Control Panel, Windows Action Center, User Account Control, Windows Update, Windows Firewall, and how firewalls work, Remote Access, BitLocker. That's pretty much everything we need to cover for the basics on Control Panel. You can find additional items in Control Panel as you explore, but we've pretty much covered all the basic tools. In the next episode, we're going to be discussing types of viruses and anti-malware strategies. Till the next one!